Creating explode states is something that I usually initiate from the view manager. And the reason I make that distinction is that for simplified reps, usually what I'll do is I'll select a component and then from my right mouse button, I'll apply actions to that component. And then when I'm done applying a bunch of different actions, I'll go to the view manager and store it. Or for something like cross sections, I'll go to the section command, create my section, and then later on I can manage them from the view manager. But usually with explode states, I find it's easiest to start in the view manager, create the explode state, edit the position of the components, and then go back to the view manager to save that state. To access the view manager, you can do that from the manage views icon on the model tab. It's also available from the view tab, but the easiest way I find to get to it is from the view manager icon in the in graphics toolbar. And right now I'm on the simplified reps tab. I'll click on the explode tab. And there's an explode state. You might like it. You can get to the explode state, the default explode, from the exploded view icon on the model tab and the view tab. But I'm going to create my own explode state by clicking on the new button. I'm going to rename it just to call it exploded. You can have as many explode states as you want. Now that I've created it, I'm going to edit the position of the components. So to do that, I'll right click on the explode state and choose edit position. You get a dashboard that's open on the computer screen, but most of the time you can just select the component or components that you want and you'll get a dragger for translating the components and then move them where you want them to be. And then just keep on with that process, select components and then reposition them by dragging them. Let's take a look at a few of the other different options in here. If you go to the References tab, this will show you the components that you've selected. And you can select multiple components by holding down the Control key and then drag them out. If you don't like the orientation of the X, Y, and Z directions for dragging, you can click here to change the motion reference. But let me click back over here and clear that. Next up, I want to show you how to rotate components around. And to do that, I'm going to zoom in on a component. Oh, let's go and move some of these other ones out of the way so that you can see it and grab this one and drag it out over here. And so, for example, this component, maybe I want to rotate it about an axis over here. So let's turn on my axis display and dashboard, I can say, hey, let's go and rotate components. And to be honest, I really don't uh, rotate that many components in an explode state, but you could if you want. And for the motion reference, we want to pick an axis. So I'll go and select on it. And now instead of a, a, the X, Y, and Z directions, you have this control for rotating the components around where you want them to be. But again, most of the time when I am moving components, I'm using translation instead. There is another button to move these relative to the view plane, but again, that's something I usually don't use a lot. Another button on the dashboard, we can select a component, and if you click on this button, it'll toggle that component between its exploded and unexploded state. Okay, let's go to the Options tab, and what we can also do is copy position. And when you click on this button, you can select the component that you want to move and the component that you want to copy the position from. Click the apply button and it uses the same amount of motion for the components. And you can use the control key to select more than one component to move. Let me close that. Next up on the options tab, you can specify a motion increment. And what I mean by that is that if I select a component over here and drag it, it's moving smoothly on the computer screen. I can move it any amount that I want. If you take a look at the dashboard, you can see a number going out to like six decimal places that's changing to show me how much I've moved the component. If I want to move it out regular increments, we can type in a number and I'll use an increment of one. And when I pick on the next component and start dragging it, you'll see that it's sort of like 
jumping in leaps as I'm moving it. And if I no longer want it to do that, I can use the drop down list to change back to smooth. And that way, when I pick other components, I'm just translating them smoothly on the computer screen. Okay, next option that we have on here is move with children. And when I check that box and I select a component to move, it'll move any components that are assembled to it. So for example, you'll notice that again, selecting one component, if I go to the references tab, just one component's listed in there, it's moving the wheel and also this nut that's assembled to it. And that remains active as long as you are moving components around until you uncheck the option. So make sure that you uh, uncheck that when you're done moving. Oh yeah, one other thing that I want to mention about explode states, use a lot of undo. If you move out a component and you're like, hey, I don't like that, hey, just go ahead and hit the undo button to step back however many steps that you want. All right. Let's uncheck that move with children option. The last thing I want to mention is creating your explode lines. And your explode lines are just the dash lines that show how one component fits into another component. And you can create the explode lines from the explode lines tab, or you could also use the button on the dashboard. And so I'll click on that, and you'll pick what you'll use for your first component. And it says that even though I picked a uh, actually conical surface, it's going to use the axis of that and then pick the other surface you want the line going to and then click apply. And you'll just keep on repeating that process for all the different explode lines that you want. Select one surface, select another surface, click apply, and you're going to end up getting your dash lines. Select that one over there and this one over here apply and there we have our different dash lines created when you're done you click the close button and you can go back to the dashboard from the explode lines tab you're able to select different explode lines and you can either edit them or if, or if you don't like it at all you can delete it so then after you're finished repositioning the different components around in your explode state you can click the check mark from the dashboard to complete it and now when you take a look at the view manager exploded has a plus sign in parentheses which means it's been modified and so if you want to keep the changes you can right click on it and choose save and in this dialog box you could save it under the same name or give it a different name so for example you might start off with a pre-existing explode state and then make changes to it to make another explode state now I'll go ahead and click OK, and that way I've created an explode state. From the ribbon, I can toggle between the explode and unexploded for the active explode state. And then this explode state will be available for me to use in combination states if I'm doing model-based definition. I can also apply them to drawing views. And if I'm using a product lifecycle management system like Windchill, they will also be available in viewables for Creo View. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and also click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.